Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the WFLY MG216 2.4 GHz radio system. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, perform a range test and give you my initial feedback after testing it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box of the WFLY MG216 combo you're getting the radio transmission module and its antenna, a quick start guide, two radio receivers along with two antennas and heat rings for both receivers. In terms of features and specs, the radio transmission module is compatible with every radio controller that has a standard GR module bay and supports OpenTX along with the ET16 and ET16S radio controllers by WFLY. It features a USB Type-C connector which will enable you to update its firmware, it's using an SMA antenna connector and its output power can be set between 5 to 100 milliwatts. As for the available radio receivers, currently there are two options, which both are included in the combo. The RG202 Mini is a small sized radio receiver that features a single antenna, and the RG202 Pro is a diversity radio receiver that hence features two antenna connectors. Both radio receivers support up to 16 channels, operate on 5 volts, the refresh rate is 200 Hz and they feature a dedicated pad for voltage detection so when in use the voltage is going to be transmitted back to the transmission module along with the telemetry data. In addition the weight of the mini receiver is 0.8 grams, the diversity radio receiver weighs 2.1 grams, the weight of each antenna is 1.8 grams, the outer dimensions of the mini receiver are 13.3 by 14 by 3.4 mm and the outer dimensions of the diversity radio receiver are 16.2 by 26.2 by 3.7 mm. As for the radio transmission module, it is pretty light and along with the antenna it weighs 40.9 grams. As for setting it up, first of all the radio receiver, just like Express LRS, is wired to the flight controller and configured in the same manner like a crossfire radio receiver. The negative is connected to ground, the 5 volts to 5 volts, WCRSF is wired to a free RX port on the flight controller, the W bus is wired to the same TX pad, and the voltage detection, in case you would like to use it, should be wired to the battery pad. As for the radio transmission module, after placing it inside a GR module bay of an OpenTX radio controller or the ET16 or ET16 WFLY radio controllers, you'll be able to set it up exactly like a Crossfire module, which means that you will be able to use either the Crossfire configuration tool or Lua script. Under the Crossfire setup menu, you'll be able to find the WFLY TX and also RX in case the radio receiver is connected to the radio transmission module. Under the WFLY TX menu, you'll be able to set the failsafe mode, so in case a failsafe is going to occur, you can set your switches and sticks to the desired position, and the radio receiver must be connected to the radio controller in order to perform this action, as otherwise it is not going to work. Next, using the bind option, you'll be able to bind a new radio receiver, and by the way, out of the box, the two radio receivers which are included are pre-bound to the radio transmission module. Under the bind parameter, you'll be able to enable or disable the return flag, which stands for enabling or disabling the telemetry data. The returned NAM flag stands for the packet ratio of the telemetry data, so the phrasing of both options is not very clear. Next, the transmission output power can be set to 5, 10, 25, 50 or 100 milliwatts. The transfer mode can be set to P2P, which means that at a time, a single radio receiver can be bound to the radio transmission module, or you can set it to radio, which means that multiple radio receivers can be bound to a single radio transmission module. Next, you can set the low and high frequency, which is going to limit the frequency of the radio receiver, and finally, you can check the firmware that you are currently running. As for the radio receiver, under the WFLY RX menu, you'll be able to set its output power, at least potentially, because on the mini version, which is the only radio receiver that I've tried, it is limited to 5 milliwatts. 
Next, you can set the server parameters, which I haven't tested. You can set the frequency, the angle, and other related parameters, including the PWM settings. In case you would like to broadcast the RSSI, SNR, and LQ, you can set them to one of the available channels. So for example, you can set it to 9, 10, and 11. Next, you can set the WBUS cycle speed, which can be set to high, or you can set it between 7 to 14 milliseconds. And the CRSF cycle speed can be set to high speed or standard. And as far as I know, high speed stands for 200 hertz and standard for 135 hertz. Next, you can invert the SBUS WBUS out. By default, it is set to standard. And the failsafe mode can be set to either failsafe which is going to use the failsafe mode that you set previously. It can be set to keep, which means that the last positions of your sticks and switches are going to be used. And I think that the preferred way in most cases is to set it to close, which means that on a flight controller like iNav or Betaflight, the failsafe mode is going to be initiated. This is actually very important because when performing the range test I missed it and unfortunately out of the box the failsafe option is set to either keep or failsafe. So although I did test that the return to home feature is working when losing radio connectivity the Recon 4 just crashed because it wasn't set to close and luckily no harm was done and I was able to recover the drone. So again, in case you would like the failsafe option to be initiated, you need to set it to close. And then on Betaflight, iNav and similar platforms, the failsafe option is going to occur and hopefully the drone is going to head back to you. As for using the MG216 on a WFly ET16S or ET16 radio controller, first you will need to update the firmware of the radio controller to the latest available version which by the way is also going to enable you to fully configure a crossfire device which is something that wasn't present at least on the initial version and under the main menu under linkage setting under link you'll be able to configure the radio transmission module unfortunately as far as i know you can't configure the radio receiver using the et16 or et16s radio controllers and at the moment of shooting this video, on both OpenTX and WFly radio controllers, the flight controller telemetry data is not included. Now let's check the output power of the MG216 model. When it is set to 5 mW, I'm getting about 9.2 mW. On 10 mW, I'm getting about 25 mW. On 25 mW, I'm getting about 43 mW. On 50, about 75 mW. And when it is set to the maximum output power, which is 100 milliwatts, I'm getting about 140 milliwatts. The next thing that I've done is to perform a range test in which the MG216 model output power was set to 5 milliwatts, which again, according to my test, equals to about 9 milliwatts. As you can see, the failsafe occurred when I reached 1.4 kilometers which means that I can estimate that the maximum range of the system when using the mini radio receiver and the output power of the MG216 model is set to 100 milliwatts should be between 5 to 6 kilometers. While it's not that bad, as far as I can tell at the moment of shooting this video, and keep in mind that things can change in the future when the firmware of the radio system is going to be updated, currently the MG216 is not something that can serve as a long range platform and for that you should either go for the express LRS or crossfire system and it can be probably something that you can consider as an alternative to the TBS racer system. In addition, getting the telemetry data from the flight controller is something that I consider very crucial and currently it is not supported and I asked WFly why this system is better than express LRS and they told me that according to them it is better because it is backed up by a reliable company. So I think that currently Express LRS is better than the system for sure, but maybe things are going to be changed in the future. And in case WFly are going to release a major update for the system, I'm going to test it again. Anyway, that's going to be it for my review of the WFly MG216 system. 
In case you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.